What is good Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to do some in-depth technical analysis and breakdown why under the Neo still looks more bullish than bearish, why I do believe Neo has at least some upside for the week. Now before I break down why under the technicals are suggesting that, why under the Neo can make a nice move to the upside, what the data tells us about the markets and Neo, and also the big, big, big events coming out for this week as we have Jerome Powell speaking and CPI and other things. Before I break any of this information down, let me quickly say a couple of things. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. I take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Neo community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below, and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Neo share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just eight days, so check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So looking at the market, I wanted to just do a very interesting analysis between Tesla and Neo real quick and break down what actually happened on Friday. As you guys remember, let me just remind you, Tesla announced the news that they're cutting prices for two of their models. And as a result, we saw the entire Chinese EV sector take a bit of a hit temporarily before getting a bit of a bounce. Now, why did this happen? Why is Tesla doing this? Because demand in China is slowing down, right? And because demand is slowing down, people are saving at a higher rate in that country, right? I don't want to go into any more details about the economic situation that they are in, but it is difficult for a lot of people. And my heart goes out to any innocent people who are struggling during these hard times, whether you're in the USA, whether you're in some other country, you know, there are still great people all over the world. And I want the best for innocent, innocent citizens that do not want to harm anyone. But anyways, so now we had this big gap to the downside and Neo got a very big bounce, but the whole market saw a mini squeeze like event. Looking at SPY, right? SPY in the QQQ, you will notice that SPY came down, <coughs> excuse me, in the very beginning of the day, SPY came down pretty hard for uh, the first like 10, 20 minutes. Then we got a huge rebound after PMI came out, after the jobs market was showing some weakness and the market was looking for some reason to push up because the market makers wanted the market to go up with the high put volume. So then SPY's got this big move. So did the QQQ. We can look at the QQQ. Similar move. Nice push to the upside on the QQQ. It went exactly where I predicted it would go, very close to 270. That was my target. That's almost where it went to. Super, super close, off by $0.07. Cents. And when this all happened, what happened to NEO? Did NEO continue to crash? Was NEO dead? No. Uh, both Tesla and NEO got a bit of a push. So on this side, on my right side, let me pull up Tesla. Tesla pushed up green. It actually ended up closing green. So I was very impressive by, by Tesla. But NEO came down pretty hard. It was down 12%. It came down so hard. And then this thing bounced and it started to rally with the market. See, all these green candles came down hard and then we just bounced and started rallying for the entire day. And Neo closed down about 4%. So we went from being down 12% to closing down 4%, right? We went up 8%. And Neo, if Neo started like right here, it could have gone up much higher. But instead, we had the bad piece of news before the big bounce. So that's the context about where Neo is. Now, what's going to go on for the future? And I want to break this down. I first must note that we are getting some good headlines about Neo, how Neo could jump like 49% this year, who knows? But here's my point. I can't always predict the news. Nobody can. Sometimes unexpected things could happen, and sometimes it could lead to some altercations. But if we kind of like don't focus too much on the news because big catalysts that move Neo very hard, they don't come out every single day. Sometimes it takes a couple of days. Sometimes it could take a week right before the next big piece of news that comes out, that affects it, comes out. So before that ends up happening, and I don't expect anything too big to come out for Monday, hopefully, we could then depend on technical analysis. And it is actually fairly accurate for the most part. There could be fake outs and things like that. But 
given what the charts tell us, they tend to be very accurate and give us some good assessments. I'm going to show you exactly how. Now, remember, for Tuesday, we don't have too much coming up for Monday, but for Tuesday, we have Jerome Powell speaking. When he speaks, the whole market can move big time. And then on Thursday, we also have CPI coming out. It's going to be very important. Right now, NEO has a relatively low price pairs ratio. It, want, it wants to bounce to the upside. It wants to start, start outperforming the market. I'm hoping NEO could actually do it. It's starting to base right here, hoping for a nice push up. This is what tends to happen when NEO is this oversold. We got some nice buy ratings. Neo is green only about what like 49% of the time on Mondays. I'm hoping for a green day regardless, but for sure Tuesday tends to be green 55% of the time. Neo tends to have stronger Tuesdays than Mondays, so I'm hoping over the next two trading days, Neo does get a pop to the upside. But hopefully it starts as early as tomorrow. Now let's talk about the charts. And once again, Neil, uh, they put this on the Twitter page, the ESA. It looks very luxurious, very big, very spacious, beautiful, beautiful SUV. Anyways, okay, enough about the news, enough about the data. Let's talk about Neil. What's going on with the chart? So far, it's quite obvious Neil has this giant gap up to about 10.8. And I assume when you look at SPY on the one hour chart, we got a nice breakout and we actually almost hit 390. So to me, it looks like with this momentum, with people's sentiments changing, people becoming more greedy, people starting to buy in, and the amount of puts that were bought on SPY, there's likely going to be a continuation of the squeeze, okay? If we do come down to retest this like wedge area and then bounce, or we just continue popping, either way, in my opinion, here's just my opinion, I believe SPY could hit 390. It really could. And if we break it, there's going to be 393 to 395. But specifically, 395 is probably going to be the strong resistance. That's where gap resistance is. If there's a huge catalyst for CPI that pushes us up, or a Jerome Powell, 395 could even turn into 400. This thing could fill the gap to 400. Uh, I, I don't want to guarantee that. I'm actually aiming more for like 395 ish. But like I said, the market might have more upside. If that's the case, the VIX is likely going to come down to fill the gap. Hasn't done it yet to the 20 zone. Below 21, we're not there yet. And if that's the case, right, the dollar index also suggests that. And also the QQQ right here. <clears throat> the QQQ basically suggests that we're at this resistance break above 270. If this thing breaks and if Apple starts pushing, Tesla starts pushing, this thing could fly to 273 quite easily and start fighting resistance between 274 to 275, okay? We could come up pretty quickly to get to those tests. And if that's the case, if all of this is happening, right, if SPY gets a nice bounce, SPY starts pushing, Tesla starts pushing, QQQ starts pushing, and there are not too many like negative catalysts for NEO, negative pieces of news, which I'm not seeing so far, I believe NEO is going to go for this gap fill and fill the gap pushing up to 10.8, and we're going to break above 10.81. I say that because once NEO breaks it, we could re-enter this like very choppy area and fight for $11 again. And I believe that's what NEO is going to do. I think NEO is going to come back to 11, start fighting back and forth and back and forth. We might be able to break out of this channel temporarily and see NEO try to fill the other gap around this 11.66 area. So NEO could push to 11 plus 11.66 pretty soon over the next couple of days. Is it going to go in a straight line up? I don't think so. I think there might be a trap in the markets where we have like a day where we basically gap down into open. We come down a little bit, retest 10, maybe go a little lower. They try to trap people. And then we see the market just reverse again. And we just start going for the gap fill. And maybe within a day, we should go for this gap fill. So my target on NEO would be seeing this thing break above 10.8, maybe going into tomorrow. That's my target. Maybe NEO comes down a little bit. Then if we get a nice push up, I want to see this thing close above 10.8 or at least fill the gap there. It would be beautiful to see. Ideally, if we close above 10.8, this thing has potential to fight for the $11 resistance. Break that, and there's going to be a lot of chop between 11.33 and 10.8. Neo could chop back and forth here, maybe break it, go a little bit higher, okay? But I want to see Neo 
break 10.8 and start fighting for 11. I believe that's going to happen tomorrow or by Tuesday at the very least. And I'm more optimistic, guys, as long as there isn't a bad piece of news that comes to kill the party for Neil. But so far, I'm not seeing it. So far, I'm not seeing any major negative catalyst or piece of news for like the super, super short term, specifically for tomorrow or the day after. So I'm optimistic. I'm hoping for a nice push to the upside for Neo and the collective market. Anyways, thank you all so much for listening. Have a great rest of the day. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Neo to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.